This video is to show how to set up the Ethernet IP connection on a FANUC robot. This is using the, the new Plus controller, which is the same thing as the old way on the older controller, so it doesn't really matter. First thing you do is go over to host communication. <clears throat> I'm doing this because I always forget how to do it when it's time to get a new robot. This page is pretty self-explanatory. You put the IP address of the robot here. Uh, the subnet mask is always that. And then the router IP address, so we have a, in the control cabinet, we have a, uh, a little switch or a couple of switches. But anyway, that is the address of the switch. It's just uh, the same neighborhood as that, except it's one. Um, and then, what you do here is you set up your PLC address in here. So it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. You just go to the keyboard, type in whatever you want to name it, and then go over to here and type in, just key in the numbers of the IP address. They call it internet address, which is kind of, it kind of throws you off. So there is the next step, which is go to I.O. Go down to Ethernet IP. Oh uh, wait, that might have been where we're at. No, no, we're good. So this is, uh, I've already set this up, so it's running. Let me show you what it looks like when it's running. So you're not allowed to edit anything, but it tells you the, the configuration and status of your system. Uh, right now the PLC's turned off, so you can't see the scanner IP, but um, this input size, they are groups of 8 bits. So uh, we have 28 bit words. And uh, let me show you how you change that up. Because you need that to match what's in your PLC. So you go previous and you turn this to false. And you go back over to the connection, you hit config, and then you're allowed to change these settings, these three settings. So we just use 20. Uh, it's big enough to accommodate anything we want to do. It's, it's probably way bigger than what we need, but it doesn't matter. Uh, all right, so we go to previous, and we turn it back on, or else it won't work. And then the next step is to go to your, well, let's do, so the, the way we set our robots up is we use the UOP. So this tells you, as far as outputs, it tells you it's ready, program's running, you pause, you have a fault, so on and so forth. Um, and then on the other side, your inputs to the PLC, or uh, inputs to the robot are uh, start, stop, enable, uh, program select numbers, stuff like that. You have to configure this on rack 89, which is Ethernet IP, slot one, start one. It, the start is where you want it, but what we do is we start everything at one, and then uh, I, I think, oh yeah, so it's uh, in, your, in your PLC, the first 18 bits are, are just for this, for the in and the out. So then uh, basically on on bit three in the PLC is when the rest of your regular I.O. starts. Everything prior to that is this UOP setup. So the first stuff in your PLC, if you set it up at one, is just your, your user operator parameters or whatever UOP stands for. Then, this is where it gets a little more tricky. So this is your digital in and out. This is what you use to communicate with the PLC. So we've got mills and saws and so on and so forth. Um, so these are just whatever you want them to be and you set them up between the PLC and the, and the robot. These are configured in the same way. So uh, rack 89 starts at, sorry, we're in rack 89 slot one. We're starting at 33, which means that we're starting in the one, two, three, fourth, fourth word. Uh, is that right? Yeah, right? Yeah. And then, uh, so there's 1 through 28, 29 through 140. Uh, that actually doesn't make sense. It doesn't really, 
doesn't really matter. Yeah, this is set up a little wonky. So this, 1 through 28 starting at 33 looks right, but I've got 129 through 140 starting at 21, which doesn't make sense. So don't do that. And then I've got a, a, another large chunk, uh, 145 starting at uh, 161. It doesn't really matter what you do, so long as it makes sense between the, the robot and the PLC. If we go here, you can see that it's the same idea on the, this is the inputs. So anyway, you get to make this whatever you'd like. But the important thing is, is that you can't start in a number that's already been used by something like the UOP. So you'll see this active signal, and the help menu is actually pretty helpful. But this, this active can be uh, pending or invalid or something. Um, when you have it right, it'll be pending, and then I think you have to do a restart, and then it'll be active. And then you can test, you can turn on some, some bits, and you go monitor this, and you turn on a signal, like you force it on, and it works. So uh, I think, I think that's about all of it. Oh, one other important thing is in order for all of that UOP information to actually mean something, you have to go into the configure screen. So system config, and then number seven is enable UI signals. So when you do that, it's looking for the safety signals from the PLC, like uh, safe speed, enable, and uh, one or two others, I don't remember what they are offhand. But it's looking for that input from the PLC that says you're, you're okay to go. So that, that is what enables you to run in auto. Now where we're just still setting this system up, we keep that to false, and uh, then we can jog it around by hand. If you turn it to true, you may not be able to jog by hand depending on what's turned on and off. Um, yeah. I think that's uh, all I wanted to show. Thank you.